Despite it being easy to center something with CSS for probably a decade now, people still make jokes about it or still complain about how hard it is to center a div. You'll see replies of people going, well, just use Flexbox or Grid and, you know, they're showing examples and trying to be helpful and then you get the reply of, well, what if you can't use Flexbox or Grid? And I mean, sure, while you're at it, why don't you just go and loop over that array you have in your JavaScript without using a for loop or a for each or one of the other plenty of loops that you have? at your disposal, just do it, you know, find the most complicated way to do it, because well, I don't know. But it did get me thinking because there's lots of ways to center things with CSS, but some of them are easier, some are the harder, some are more practical or less practical. So I was wondering how many easy ways are there to center things with CSS and what are the best situations to use them in? Hello there, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here. And if you are new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials that are mostly focused around helping you fall in love with CSS, and if not fall in love with it, at least be a little bit less frustrated by it. Today, we're gonna to be having some fun by centering things with CSS, but since I have to take the absolute best solutions off, because 95% of the time, flex or grid are the best way to do it. Since we're taking those solutions off the table, I'm not only going to be looking at how to do it, but I'm gonna be rating all of these based on a few different criteria. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at is how easy is it? And we're gonna be looking at, is it like easy just to do right away? Do we need magic numbers to get it to work? Uh, do I need lots of properties or is it relatively simple? Next up, we're gonna do how easy are they to understand or maintain as part of your project? And by that, I mean like, if another team member was to stumble across your uncommented code, would they understand what's going on or would they just be staring at it and be completely lost? And my last rating is the practicality of the solutions. Like, is this something I would actually use? Even if it's maybe harder to understand, maybe in certain situations that might even be better than Flex or Grid, who knows? So this is a challenge to myself to see how many solutions I can come up with to center something without Flex or Grid and then rate them based on how I feel in the moment of when I come up with them. Let's go and see how I can do with this. All right. So we're here in CodePen, so I put the link to this in the description down below if you want to play around with it a little bit yourself. And what we're going to be doing first, um, the first thing I thought of was an old trick that I used to use all the time when I didn't know any better. So uh, it's based on text. You wouldn't necessarily do this with a div. I don't even know if it would work with a div. Uh, but if you have some text somewhere, obviously we know we can do a text align of center like that, and it will go horizontally centered. Uh, but then to vertically centered, you can actually give something a line height of 400 pixels. And you may be going, Kevin, that's huge. Why 400? Uh, it's not quite centered. We also need to say a margin of zero on that to get rid of the margin, which is pushing it down. And it's centered. And if you know this trick, you'll know why I chose 400. But it's to match the height of the box that it's inside of. And this is kind of a cool trick where you can center stuff like that. Uh, it has tons of drawbacks, though. It's really not the best solution. Um, because center me... Uh, happen, you know, you, you update your thing a bit and you have happens to be longer than it used to be. Um, and the giant line height here causes all sorts of problems because obviously it's centered here for that first line, but you can see the blue highlight there is the line height. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not something that's super practical, but it works. I used to do that for navigations for a long time until I, I learned better. Um, but that would work. Uh, one way you could improve upon this, I guess, if you really needed to, is with a custom property of height and do 400 pixels there or whatever. We're, we're using height um, pixels for all this, but var and then height here. And then we could copy that and paste it down here. So the advantage with this is you could, you know, you're increasing how easy it is to maintain because if you change this, both of them will change at the same time and it will always stay centered. Uh, but that said, I'm not a huge fan of the solution. So yeah, as far as ease goes, I think it's super easy to do. So I'd give it like an eight or maybe even a nine. But when it comes to maintenance or how easy it would be for someone who just stumbles across it to understand, if they haven't seen that trick before, they're gonna have no idea. Like if you had that line height here uh, set to 400 and they come across that, they're gonna be confused. They're gonna change it. It's gonna break stuff. So I'm giving it like a two under maintenance for your project. It's also, unless you're using the custom property here, uh, it's kind of not maintainable. Plus, if the text gets a little bit longer, you know what, we're, we're knocking maintenance down to a one because uh, the text changes, it breaks onto multiple lines, the whole thing goes out the window, you can't do it. So yeah, they're a one. And as far as how practical it is, yeah, we'll give it out a one too because for that reason I just said, it's too easy to break. It just, there's so many other solutions we could be using instead. So it's really easy once you know the trick, but it's a terrible idea and you should never do it. All right, so on to the next one. And since I was sort of in this idea of uh, old school, 
Um, what I'm going to do is here on my inner text, let's get rid of my, no, we're going to keep the text align center. Uh, but we're going to get rid of the line height because that's kind of terrible. Uh, but for this, we're actually going to have to go onto the outer box here. And we're going to do, and I said old school, right? We're going to do a display of table, Ooh, which is all super scary. And this is really old school. And here we're also going to change the display to table cell. So it's acting like a table cell. And what that opens up is a vertical align of middle, just like that. And that should plop it right in the middle. And it's kind of crazy to think that with tables way back in the day, we had sort of easy, you know, usually it was in a table, so you didn't have to do these two and you were just in a cell already. Uh, and then you could use this and we sort of lost that for a long time once we stopped doing layouts with, uh, with tables, but it's also a really good thing that we stopped doing layouts with tables. So how would I rate this? For ease, I'm not actually sure how to rate this for ease because I, it's kind of awkward. Unless you're, if you're in a table, the ease is like a 10 on 10 just because you just drop this where you need it. But if you're not in a table, it drops down like to maybe a six because you have to do a table on the outside and then the table cell on the inside one to be able to get it to work, which is kind of awkward. Maintainability is dropping like way down because people would come across this and just have no idea um, why you're doing this. So I don't think the maintainability or the practicality, I think they're both just ones these days. I don't think there's a good reason why you'd want to do this. Um, and there are unintended things that could come up with things being table cells too. So yeah, I think for maintainability, because nobody else would have any idea why you've done this. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe maintainability would be a bit higher because vertical line middle is much better than like a line height of 400 pixels. So maybe for maintainability, we could pop it up to like a three, maybe even a four. Uh, but for practicality, you know, we have much better solutions. So I'm keeping that one at a one for this. Maybe it's just because I've been scarred by table layouts and never want to see them again. So they scare me. But yeah, let's not do this one either. Um, so let's get, let's get rid of that and get rid of that. Um, and for these next ones, instead of text, I'm going to do a box itself. Um, and that last one would have worked, I'm pretty sure, if we just had this box here um, as well. But um so this one, what I'm going to do is a positioning. So on my outer box, I will come on and do a position position of relative to make this my containing block. And I don't want to do this on inner text. I do have my inner box right here. Let's copy that and just move it up to here um, so we can style on here. So the outer box is my position relative, which makes it the containing uh, box for here. And that means I can come on here and say position absolute like that. And then I can do a top of 50% and a left of 50%. And I think this was like the gold standard for a long time. Um, but right now it's not working. If you've never seen this before, it might be kind of confusing, but a lot of people I think might have seen this at one point or another. Uh, basically what it's doing is it's putting the corner here at the exact 50%. So it's moving it down by 50% and across by 50%, but based on the corner right there. So because of that, what we can then do is a transform, translate, and just do a negative 50% and a negative 50% and that will plop it right in the middle. And um, so what this is doing, these values are based on the parent. So 50% across, 50% down. And then these values here are based on the element itself. So then it's going 50% uh, across itself and 50% up and it ends up being perfectly centered. Now I'm actually a pretty big fan of this one. Uh, I think it works really well uh, if you're using pseudo elements. Anytime you're using position absolute, a lot of other things that we would use go away. So I do think that there's still value in this, even though we have flex and grid options these days. Uh, I think that this is actually a pretty good one. Um, there are some things like you have to have the position relative here and then have this over here. So there is, you do need that like sort of connection to make, or I mean, this doesn't have to be a relative. There's a few other ways to make that the containing block, but um, you do need the parent to have a property on it that's going to enable this to work. And so from like an ease standpoint, the ease on this is like a four, right? It's not the easiest thing to do. You have to go to the parent, set the position there or whatever to make it the containing block. Then you have a bunch of properties here. You have to it's not that hard to remember, I guess, but it is a lot of like lines of CSS just to get this to work. So I think the like, ease is maybe a four or five. I'll go with a four. Maintainability of like someone comes across my code. Can they understand what's happening? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> um, you'd see a whole bunch of 50%. So I guess you can sort of understand what's going on there, but I don't think it's super duper obvious. Um, it's definitely not like when you just have something saying center and it goes in the middle. So from that point of view, I'd probably give it maybe a six. I think people know about it a lot. I think if you see a whole bunch of like top left transforms, translates 
you can sort of get the idea that it's the middle. It's not the most obvious thing if you've never seen it, but you play with the number and quickly you would realize what it's doing. Uh, so for there, sure. And for practicality, it actually give it like an eight. Uh, I think it's super practical even today. As I said, if you're using position absolute, then this is something that you'd probably use in an actual project at one point or another. This one actually makes me think of another newer one that I've been using, uh, where what I'm going to do is let's get rid of all of this and we're going to stick with our position absolute. But what I'm going to do is an inset of zero. So this is like a modern CSS take on the same thing. Um, so what inset of zero is doing is if I don't have a width and a height, let's just comment those out for one second, it's going to fill up the entire parent. So this is a top left, bottom right, all of zero. So I'm saying top left, bottom right, all zero. And that's letting it live within that space. Um, because this is 200 by 200, I have the 400 by 600 for my box. So it has the space to live in, but it's still sitting at 200 by 200. And then I could come here and just say margin auto. Uh, and that gives me the same result. Look at that. Um, and I like this a lot better. <laughs> and you could do this again. You don't have to use inset. You could use top, bottom, left and right instead. Uh, but I do think this for the is the same as my previous solution, but better. This is the better version. Uh, and I was pretty high on that last one. So like from a ease of use, it's easier. There's a, one less line of code, but it's also a lot less characters going on. Like you don't have the, the whole translate, transform, negative 50, negative 50. Like this is a lot simpler. So I'm giving it like a nine on just ease of use. I think it's really easy. It would be a 10 if we didn't need this guy up here, but we do. So uh, without, um, one thing is if this was on like a fixed one, instead of something that's position absolute, then you don't have anything up here. So maybe on fixed, it's a 10, but with absolute, it's a nine, um, maintainability is an eight. Maybe people might not know inset. Um, even though I think it's going to become very popular very quickly since it's a shorthand for top, bottom, left, and right. Uh, and the margin auto is a super obvious, right? We know margin auto centers things. And the fact that this also centers vertically is just really, really, really awesome. So yeah, I'd give this an eight there probably, and maybe as high as a nine for practicality, a little bit better than the last one. I think this is a really awesome solution for when you do need absolute positioning. If you don't need absolute positioning, you should just be using flex for this. But if it's a pseudo element and you sort of have to do that, and there's other reasons for using something like this. And you know, this is probably the go-to these days for what I'll be doing if I need to do something like that. All right. So that's sort of the big guns, but there is a another one that I can think of that's a little bit different. I'm going to keep this box here, but let's get rid of the positioning because we don't need that. Um, this is one where I'm actually going to take the, and you could, you could leave height as part of this, but I'm going to take the height off. Um, and this is one where people don't always think of it, but I'm going to go in my inner box and I'm going to say, this is like my simple one, early days of everything. I'm going to say a margin of zero auto. So zero top, bottom, auto, left and right. Uh, and then I'm just going to come on my outer box and set some padding here. So we'll do padding top and bottom of, uh, let's just say 300 pixels and a left and right of zero. And by doing that, uh, you get it centered and maybe we'll drop that down 200. Um, so you have equal padding on the top and the bottom is giving you that space. And because I have a width and this is centering within that width, it's working there too. And I love this solution. I mean, this is really great. And you could even like, let's take off my inner box and put the text back in. Um, for me, you have a big hero area and you just need your text or whatever it is centered in that equal padding top and bottom is getting the job done a lot of the time. And you could even like push this, right? So let's just say, um, this is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration of what I'm going to do here, but let's say that the, uh, let's just actually, we'll do a hundred width is gonna be a hundred percent now. Um, so it's more like hero area. -y. Um, and then I have some stuff on my, my code pen lower down to center it that way, but Let's say that my padding then becomes uh, 100. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, we'll do 50 viewport height. And this could sort of give you that like full width thing, except now like this is a full width page center. Uh, but we do have a bit of scrolling because of this guy here. Um, and actually text is going to be hard to do it with. Maybe I should have done it with a box. Um, because then what we could do is, and again, this is not, I'm, I'm getting out of the realm of practical at this point. <laughs> um, but say we did inner height is uh, 200 pixels. Um, and then here I would have my var inner height. And the big advantage of doing something like this is on my padding, I could actually do a calc here. Calc of var inner height minus uh, 
or var inner height, and actually I want to do 50 viewport height minus my var inner height, um, which should give me, oh, uh, you know what? That's not actually, <laughs> I just thought of that. Let's do the inner height is, uh, or there's two options here because what's happening is it's it's subtracting too much. Um, so I could either do a calc down here to double the height in this part, or I could do another calc. And this is this is we're getting out of the realm of like something you'd actually want to have on a page now, maybe um, because it's getting a little bit over the top. But we could do an inner height here divided by two. Is this even gonna work? There we go. Look at that. Um, I do have a bit of side scrolling up or bit of scrolling for some reason. But that technically, oh, you know what it is. It's my border here. <laughs> Let's turn that off. Uh, there we go. Perfectly centered on the page, 100% viewport height, uh, have full width. Uh, practicality on this? Mm, not the greatest. Um, it's not the easiest to do. So ease is kind of low, maybe like a three. Practicality or maintenance? Or probably like a five and then the practicality is kind of low too because there's other ways of doing this <laughs> so maybe like a four um, because maybe there's some situations where you'd need this type of thing going on um, I also don't like the idea of setting a set height on my inner box um, it's a lot better but you know you could use even JavaScript to populate this number for you and then center something like that and that could be kind of cool too um, but yeah, just coming up with ideas here on how we can perfectly center something. And now I pushed it a little more to have like a view, a very specific height set to it as well. Uh, and you could change the, you could have a, a definitely like a custom property here for a viewport height, uh, the outer height as well, and sort of play around with all the numbers. So here, this wouldn't be 50. It would be pl a play on your total outer height that you wanted divided by two. So it's split amongst the top and bottom and stuff. You could come up with some fun stuff with this, but the practicality just sort of, it gets a little weird, I think. Um, and it makes me very happy that we have Flexbox and Grid to be able to do a lot of this stuff. And I would love to know, is there any other solutions I didn't think of that you know of that you could center things vertically and horizontally without Flexbox and Grid? If so, please leave them in the comments down below to let me know. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of awesome Zach and Randy, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.